Tron Smart. Wow, Tron Smart. Um, they just sent me another speaker, the Tron Smart Mirror Tune S100. Um, I got the H1. It was pretty decent. The S100. Um, I think it's supposed to came come out on the 28th, which is like pretty much now. It should be already out once you're watching this video. And this is their bigger version of the uh, Tron Smart's Mirror Tune lineup. It's a very good speaker for eighty dollars. It's got good sound. It's got you know customizable EQ. But there there is some problems. I will talk about a little later. Let's get into the sound check first. We're gonna compare it against this the Bogasing uh, SA Pro Max and this the Soho Surge Boom Three. We're gonna see how it sounds. So uh, keep in mind I put the grill on because it does change the sound if you take it off. It sounds a lot better when you pull the grill off, but really wouldn't recommend doing that, especially if you're uh, using the speakers in the outdoors, all right? So, let's get to it. First, let's compare it against the Bogastin. We'll set the equalizer at rock mode. In my opinion, that has the best and the clearest sound out of all of them. It sounds the most, I wouldn't say neutral, but the smoothest. Um, we're going to have the volume set at 50%, and the Bogastin will be matched to the Transmart volume-wise. Let's go. Alright, now I'm going to pull the grill off of the Tron Smart and we're going to compare it like that. You'll know what I'm talking about. The Tron Smart without grill, uh, the sound just opens up. So I think they had the DSP tuned before they put the grill on. So, you know, they didn't uh, take into account the fact that the uh, cloth grill will change the sound of the speaker because they're not using a metal grill here. <laughs> All right, let's crank them all the way up. Max volume, we're gonna start with the uh, Tron Smart again. Well, the Tron Smart, plays not as loud as the Bogasin, but at maximum volume, I think the Transmart sounds a lot better. It's more well-rounded. It, unlike the Bogasin, it boosts the mids. Both compresses, uh, they're both kind of like huffs, like does some volume adjustment on, on bass kicks. So yeah, there's compression and it, it's obvious on, the both, on both speakers uh, to get it to play that loud. Um, Sound-wise, I think both are quite comparable. Uh, the only thing I have to say is that when you have the grill on, the uh, Tron Smart just sounds muffled. If you have it off, it is a very good sounding speaker, actually. I think I'm very amazed by how good the clarity is once you pop the grill off. It makes a huge difference. Uh, without the grill, actually, I think the Tron Smart sounds a little better than the Bogasin. That's just my personal opinion. Both are more on the boomy side. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess this is a give and take. Both are on the same level in terms of sound quality. Uh, keep in mind the Tron Smart is only $80. So, in my opinion, I think Transmart wins this, and I don't think I could crown the Bogasin as the Huachan Bay King anymore on this category. I think the Transmart will take over. However, that is to say, that would only apply once you have the grill removed off of the Transmart speaker. With the grill on, it just uh, it just does not sound good. I'm going to compare the Transmart to the Solo Surge Boom 3. 
the solo Surge Boom 3 obviously does not play as loud as the Tron Smart. The speaker, the woofer is like half the size. Um, but the solo Surge Boom 3, in my opinion, is very, very great in terms of its sound quality. So let's see how it compares. All right. quite obvious that the uh, Solo Surge Room 3 is a very treble heavy speaker. It's a lot brighter than the Tron Smart, but uh, the Solo, I think the bass is also tuned a little better. I don't know if you've noticed the Tron Smart uh, Mirror Tune S100 is a very, very boomy speaker. It is so boomy. Um, but the thing is, it, it actually goes all the way down to the 40 hertz region, yet they tune it in such a boomy way that you really can't hear any bass at the 40 hertz region. It's not, it doesn't give you the feeling of the of deep rumbling bass because it's all drowned out by the boominess. So I think that's, um, I think Transmart needs to work on their tuning. Although I think the speaker is a speaker with a lot of potential. Now here's the thing, um, since they sent me the speaker and I actually did give them some feedback about how I don't really like tuning and, and whatnot. Um, I'm actually surprised that they are willing to talk to me about this. Um, and um, we went back and forth. I sent them a couple emails and also sent me a couple emails. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think uh, the product team is willing to work together and uh, tune the speaker, make it better. Um, I'm actually going to give it a shot. I need an actions config tool. I need some development software that uh, I could use the config tool with. So I could uh, tune the EQ, measure it and tune it. And I could go, you know, book a lab or uh, the anechoic chamber if it's open or just a random studio around our school and um, have a quiet place to tune this and hopefully make the EQ better. I'm still in talks with the uh, Transmart team and we'll, I'll update in community posts uh, if there's any news. Still, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the config tools and all that. And, you know, we also got to worry about the fact that if we're going to brick the uh, ATS chip or not. I, I've been bricking a lot of CSR chips uh, recently so <laughs> yeah anyways um, it's all for future plans see this what I'm pointing out is that Transmart is I like it because I knew Transmart used to make some pretty terrible speakers they had the I had the Bang Mini it was awful and some other Transmart speakers that I also heard and didn't like and returned it was pretty bad but they've actually been improving and from from this back and forth you could tell that they're actually passionate about making their speakers better and they might not be the best sounding speakers right now but you know, if they keep getting better and better and other companies from Huachang Bay just stays there, eventually Transmart will overtake them. I want to keep seeing this. These companies that are willing to communicate with people, it's going to give them actual feedback and from those feedback, improve upon their products. So big shout out to Transmart. That's how I would I, what I would like to say. I wouldn't say the speaker is the best I've ever heard. It's not a bad speaker. I just think that's it. It has a lot of potential that hasn't been brought, brought out yet. But here's the thing. They're willing to bring that out. And there's other Bluetooth speaker companies that are unwilling to do such things, such as a brand that starts with an A. I'm not going to point it out, but you know.
All right, I think it's time for teardown. All right, let us take a look at the circuit. So, obviously, as I've mentioned uh, in my uh, attempt to help them tune this thing, it is using an ATS2853 for the Bluetooth module, Bluetooth chipset. Ah, sorry for my shaky camera. We also have some, seems to be power management chips for charging. And on this side, we have our amplifier system. It is a 2.1 amplifier over there. I don't know if you can see the heat sink. Uh, I do not know the, the exact model number they're using. I can't remove that heat sink. It would damage, I, I think it would damage the components in there. But you see that, that thing over here, that's the amplifier. And then again, there's probably a converter uh, for the amplifier and also, you know, some, some filtering stuff here and there. Uh, these are our LED panels. There is also an LED driver. There's supposed to be... I think that one is not a power management. That one is probably the LED driver. Um, down here, we got the battery. The battery is a twin 18650. There's two 18650s in there. So, yeah. Pretty typical. Nothing too special. In the front is our tweeters. These are tweeters that is very similar to that of a JBL Flip. Um... Or JBL charge here is the back of it it says TS four ohms 10 watts we got two of them now Transmart claims this to be a 2.1 configuration but um, I really wouldn't call it a 2.1 if the bass driver right here is playing mids as well because that would essentially make most of the music mono uh, yeah it is a bass driver um, 30 watts 8 ohms also made by the same company uh, yeah neodymium driver very interesting uh, very good driver. Um, d looks like an in-house design. I, I could be wrong, but I think Transmart probably custom made this driver for this particular purpose. Either way, a, a decent speaker. The components are very easy to be accessed. Oh, look at all that stuff. It's so easy to take it apart. So yeah, I guess that's about it. Let's uh, sum it up real quick. So first up, let's talk about sound. Um, Sound-wise, it's a very good speaker. However, there it's got its problems. First, like I said, it's got some bass issues. There's, It's way too boomy. It plays very deep, but the boominess kind of just cancels out the, the deep bass. You don't get to hear it. Um, the treble, and also a problem, once you put the cover on, the treble is muffled. Without the cover, the treble is just fine. I think it's just right. It's not too piercing, nor is it too muffled. But uh, that is, you got to take the cover off, and I really don't recommend doing so because you're going to damage the uh, drivers if, if you're not careful. Let's talk about build quality then. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's nothing wrong with the build quality. Well made, nice components. Uh, the screws feel much better than how Transmart used to do. Like I think they stepped up their game completely in terms of build quality. They've been it's, it's much better than they were before. There's not a lot of glue and all connectors could be disconnected. The drivers are nice. The circuit board is also nicely done. I think, this speaker's build qualities is on the same level as an Anchor speaker. That's quite some feat, considering it is much cheaper than the equivalent Anchors, namely the Anchor X500. This is like half the price if we're not talking about any discounts or whatnot. So big shout out to the build quality. Um, let's also talk about the engineering. So there is a few problems regarding engineering. First of all is I want to point out on this woofer driver, this cone is a very low mass cone. Like I said, nothing. Uh, there's nothing wrong about it. It's good to have a low mass cone, but it is a paper cone. Um, the speaker is, uh, I think they rated it as an APX7 speaker. So for it to be an APX7 rating, you'd expect to be able to toss it into the pool, right? Don't do it. You'll crack the cone on the speaker. The uh, cone structure here would show that on the two sides over here, it would bend. And eventually, uh, this, is, this is what I'm going to... to like I said, this is just a hypothesis, but uh, if you if you uh, have this soaked in the water for a prolonged period of time, the coating will come off and it would crack from here and here. One side would start first and then that's it. The speaker is done for. So I don't recommend you putting this into any sort of water, just like I don't recommend you doing so with any Bluetooth speakers you ever buy. Don't trust the IP ratings. Just don't. Still, uh, this is not a bad driver. It has good characteristics. It sounds good. It's just uh, this is a little engineering issue here and there, which if you use it normally, if you just have it, you know, your normal, you don't toss it in the pool or anything, it should be just fine. And 
Other than that, I think the engineering is generally very well done. It is very easy to take this thing apart. I don't think I've left any visible marks when it comes to uh, uh, removing the grills, removing the uh, top handle and everything. So very repairable. The battery is also easily accessible and the circuit board as well. Everything is held down with screws, something removable, something detachable, not uh, glue or, or silicon or some dumb shit like that. So big shout out to Tronsmart, they're really upping their games. And y'all, other Huachabe companies, you better catch up. Because if, if you don't catch up soon, you're going to get your ass kicked by Tronsmart. They're just getting better and better, I'm not joking. Um, and again, there are some things to be fixed, but I think this speaker has a lot of potential. And I would uh, praise Tronsmart for that. They've really upped their game quite a bit. And there you have it. Go buy the speaker, it's only $80. There's nothing, you know... It's, for you know something of this size at 80 bucks this is probably the best as of now i've never i haven't yet seen any speaker that could outperform this at this size so there you have it